Merry Christmas and welcome to the Christmas Eve service of the First Baptist Church of Collingdale. I'm Pastor Perry Messick. We're looking forward to our program tonight as we look into the Word of God, as we do some songs together, hear some testimonies. We hope that you will be encouraged and find joy in our time together. Let me begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that we could celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here we are a few thousand years later, reflecting back on what you accomplished through bringing your Son into the world. I pray that those that are watching at home, your family, your friends, would be uh, lifted up and drawn to the Savior through what we do here tonight. I pray for each one involved in the service that they would be excited about the opportunity to present the truth of what Christmas is about. May you receive honor and glory through what we do as we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, from verse 1 down to verse 14, talking about Jesus Christ. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. A little over 10 days ago, a group of folks from our church went out to sing Christmas carols. So we want to play one of the recordings of one of the houses we stopped in. We hope you'll enjoy it. God bless you. The world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Hark the herald angels sing first verse, you ready? Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. And jingle bells, you ready for this? On the other side, dashing through the snow, in one horse of this way, for the years we go. Let the all the way bells on that bells ring, making spirits bright. Oh, fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. And the first we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your King. Good tidings of Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year.
Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, and everything in between. <laughs>
introduction to his gospel, John reveals the magnitude of Jesus' birth. It was a cosmic event more significant than anyone could have realized at the time. Verses 1 to 3 of the Gospel of John give background information that help us to truly appreciate the Incarnation. The Word has always existed. No one created Him. At the very beginning of time, He was already there. And far from being a mere spectator of creation, He was the one who made it all. He is the very source of life. He's God Himself. It is against this backdrop that verse 14 of John chapter 1 really jumps off the page. It reads, The Word became flesh. Not only did he become flesh, he came to dwell among us. The Greek word here literally means that he pitched his tent. In a new way, Jesus was the dwelling place of God. In him was the glory of God. He broke through the mundane with his magnificent presence, and he drew near to his people. In Jesus, we see the glory of God, the creator of the universe, becoming part of his own creation, the source of all life, was given new life. The infinite one became part of finite humanity. The almighty became weak. When I take a moment to reflect on the incarnation, I feel very much like David did so many years ago. He writes in Psalm 8, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? In light of his great power and majesty, the fact that God would come to us on our level should soften our hearts and draw us even closer to him. What humility! His actions scream of his grace and goodness. From him, grace overflows, and in him is the only place that true grace is found. As we look on the face of Jesus, and as we see his works, we see God himself. Jesus has made God known to each of us. Our eyes are opened to see the goodness of God. And as we go through today, remember that the God that we serve has bridged heaven and earth at his own expense so that we, you and I, can truly live. Abundant life is found only in him. We have seen him and our lives will never be the same.
They told me Tom 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 A newborn king to see Tom 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 Our finest gifts we bring Tom 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 To lay before Earlier, I read from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. I want to read verse 14 again. It says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This key theme is so important to Christians this year. The idea of light and hope and life. Maybe like no other time, no other Christmas, we need to be thinking about these words. All three words have different meanings when you're in the context of the Word of God, but at their highest level in the Bible, they will provide what we need 
we need to, them to understand the mysteries of life, to believe that life is actually worth living, and to realize that life can extend beyond our physical existence. So we begin with light, and clearly there's three types of light. We have natural light. The book of Genesis talks about the firmament, the light of the day, and the sun, the moon, and the stars. These are all part of the creation. But then there's artificial light. That's important too. When natural light fails, man can discover and invent uh, artificial light that takes the place of natural light. Very important, especially in these long days of winter. But then there's miraculous light. This is spiritual light uh, that draws itself from God, who is called the light. Light always involves the removal of darkness. That's what it talks about in the Bible. And most children I know, maybe some adults too, have a fear, a basic fear of darkness. So light represents goodness and is the opposite of evil. It's associated with darkness. In the Bible, light is regularly associated with God, his word, and with salvation, goodness, truth, and life. But make no mistake about it, just as light is not equal to darkness, so God's goodness is not equal to evil. They're not two equal forces. Light always drives out darkness, so God ultimately destroys evil. God is a light who dispels the darkness of this world, and we can see it. Jesus came into the world as the light of the world, breaking through the darkness, uh, of sin, and he did all this through his work on the cross. It follows that believers, then, are lights in this world. We're called that. In fact, the disciples are called light or light bearers. So if we know the Lord Jesus, we are light bearers. At a future appearing of Christ, all the darkness will be dispelled, and believers will walk in purity, peace, and joy, in the light of a living God. That truth, the truth of this light, gives us hope, the other word. Now, it's not a hope like, I wish this would work out, I wish I would win the lottery. These are probably not hopes. And it's not a hope just of promises of a family member or friend. Uh, they may be solid promises, but they may also be maybes. <laughs> But the hope we're talking about is the promises of God. It's a 100% lock and guarantee. So hope is to trust in, to wait for, to look for, to desire something or someone to expect is a good word too. So in the Bible, the words hope and trust are linked together. Because our hope is in God and his promises, we trust. In him. And many times the word hope means, as I said, to wait or to be patient, to endure. And the Bible talks about times of suffering we can go through, indicates an individual bearing up under affliction. And in Psalm 40, you see someone who at the end has endured and his hope was realized. And he said, I waited patiently for the Lord. Hope is, hope is the proper response to God, to God's Word who gives hope, and to the Holy Spirit who is given to us as a source of hope and causes hope to abound. That's all a part of our spiritual journey. Finally, though, hope is a gift. It's a gift from God through grace that leads to joy, leads to faith and love, and hope also leads to comfort when we're sorrowful or grieving. And then... This light of God, this hope of God, helps us to understand life. And we need to understand life from God's perspective. So we know there's biological life. Living, breathing, physical beings, that's who we are. There's also psychological life, our mind, our will, and emotions, our souls. But then there's eternal life, the divine life of God. God, or Yahweh as he's uh, named in the, the Bible, is a source or sustainer of life. According to Genesis 2-7, it says, The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground 
and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Life is dependent, contingent upon that breath of God. If for some reason God would start stop breathing, we would stop breathing as well. That's how linked that we are into that. And then there's the good news of the gospel. This is John 20, 31. It tells us, these are written that you may believe in the, that Jesus, the Christ, is the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So beyond biological life and beyond psychological life, the Bible speaks of the hope of eternal life. We see this in 1 John 5, 11. It says, and this is the testimony, this is the story, this is the truth, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So, as we think about the message of Christmas, we hear the words, we hear the celebration, we know that Jesus is the light. He tells us the truth, and he rescues us from spiritual darkness. And Jesus is hope. He says, trust me, I keep my promises. And Jesus is the life. He gives meaning and purpose to our lives, even as we're here in our time on earth. But through faith, he promises eternal life, where we'll live with him forever. The songs and the hymns, the Christmas carols we sing this time of year, they repeat these words of faith over and over again and remind us of the great promises of God. Music then helps us to understand and lets the truth penetrate our hearts. In a few minutes, we'll be singing, uh, we'll be ending the service with the song, Silent Night, Holy Night. Well, this could be a holy night for you. If you are open, in your heart to Jesus and let him be born in your heart today as the song says then the truth of John 3 16 will be true for you it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life so the light of God and through the hope of his promises are you ready to accept and celebrate the life that he has for you, the eternal life that he has for you. The Bible says it's a free gift through our Lord Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of all, the greatest gift of Christmas. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you for those that have, are watching tonight. I pray for them in their own spiritual journey. I'm sure you've already done some tremendous things in their life to teach them about who you are and what you've done. But I don't know if there's ever been a time when they've trusted in you alone. Lord, there's opportunity for that, even on this Christmas Eve, to come to realize that the Jesus of the manger is the Jesus of the cross, is the Jesus of the empty tomb, and that we can have eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ alone. If that's your heart's desire, tell him that. Place your trust in Christ alone. And he'll give you the free gift of eternal life. And you can celebrate not only this Christmas, your birth in Christ, but for all eternity. That's what eternal life is about. It begins the moment you believe, the moment you trust in Christ, and it lasts forever. I thank you, Lord, for this Christmas. I ask you to encourage, comfort, sustain everyone as they move through this holiday and on into the new year. We thank you for the birth of Christ. We thank you for the life of Christ. We thank you for the death of Christ, the resurrection of life the, of Christ, and the ascension that he sits at the right hand of God the Father. Instill, us, instill in us the joy and peace that comes through faith in Jesus Christ alone, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, to conclude our service this evening, we are going to uh, end in a very traditional way by singing a very traditional song. In fact, this song was written for guitar for Christmas Eve many, many years ago. And it has actually become a tradition here at First Baptist Church of Collingdale to sing this song to conclude our Christmas Eve service. So now I invite you to, if you have a candle, to light it 
because there's nothing like the warm glow of a candle on a Christmas Eve service. So with your candle lit, we ask you now to join your voices with ours as we sing Silent Night. to gather together this Christmas Eve to worship you. You alone are worthy of our worship, our praise. You alone are worthy of the honor. And so we thank you, most of all, on this Christmas for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who you sent to this earth to die on the cross so that we can have forgiveness of sin. And he not only died, but he rose again that third day, conquering death once and for all. And for that, we praise you. And we thank you. You are God. You have the plan. You are the plan. In fact, Jesus Christ was the perfect plan for the redemption of mankind. And we thank you for that. Father God, go before us. Strengthen us. Protect us. Encourage us. Guide us, Father God, as we go out throughout the rest of this year. May your light shine brightly from within us. We ask this in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so tonight, that does conclude our service. Be careful when you blow out your candle. And we would just like to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. We pray that you would have been blessed tonight and that as you go forth through the rest of your Christmas celebration, that the light of Jesus would shine brightly from within you and that others would see Christ in you. As we look toward the new year, may you be encouraged, may you be strengthened, may you be guided by our God. He loves you. Go in peace. We pray this for you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.